Hello and welcome to this lecture. I want us today to look at another important crime that is associated with urban community and this is illicit drugs. However, I need to point from the onset that illicit drugs are not only found in urban areas. Indeed, they are also found in rural areas. But the fact that it is more found in urban areas, we consider it as one of the major crimes that is associated with urban communities. Uh, in our attempt to understand what illicit drugs is, there are several issues that we are going to look at. First, we want to look at the meaning about uh, illicit drugs. Then, we shall delve into the various types of illicit drugs that are available within the community. Third, we shall look at uh, what makes illicit drugs a crime. In other words, we shall look at the implications of illicit drugs on crime. Lastly, we want to look at the various approaches that societies and governments around the world have employed in their effort to manage illicit drugs. Uh, with regard to what is meant by illicit drugs, there are various definitions that go with what illicit drug is. However, we want to look at three. First, we want to understand illicit drugs are those drugs that are highly addictive and illegal. Secondly, we want to look at illicit drugs are those drugs that are not allowed to be used unless under the direction of a medical expert. But third, we want to understand illicit drugs as simply non-medical use of drugs. For instance, if you take painkiller without the direction of the doctor, that might amount to illicit use of drugs. Now, with regard to the various types of illicit drugs, the first type that I want us to look at are what we call stimulants. Stimulants are drugs that make us, uh, that create hyperactivity in us by altering our heartbeat as well as brain activity. There are several signs that can be seen in an individual to signal that the person is using illicit drugs. One is increase in body temperature, loss of weight, Sometimes the uh, people using illicit drugs develop skin disorders. There are also cases they suffer from vitamin deficiency and also at some point they also suffer from malnutrition. This is because some of these drugs interfere with people's appetite to the point that people don't find meaning in eating and therefore they starve for a considerable amount of time. But there are also other important signs of uh, stimulants use in individuals. One of them is lack of sleep or what we generally call insomnia. Some suffer from depression and others experience dilated pupils. There are several types of drugs or several drugs that people use as stimulants. One of them of course is cocaine. Uh, the other category of illicit drugs are called opioids. Opioids are drugs that we use to suppress pain, or in other words, they are drugs that we use as painkillers. There are several signs that can be observed in individuals who are abusing or who are using opioids. One of them is drowsiness. Some suffer from muscle aches, others vomit, some suffer from chills, and others develop breathing difficulties. But it is important to understand that excessive use or overdose of, of opioids can lead to malnutrition, it can lead to gastrointestinal problems, as well as breathing problems. Uh, the other type of illicit drugs that I want us to look at are called the hallucinogens. These are drugs that alter our perception of the space time and reality. In fact, 
people take them so that they think that they're living in a different world. Some of the signs that individuals are using these types of drugs include uncoordinated movements, high blood pressure, dizziness, and also vomiting. But overuse or overdose of illicit drugs could result in suicidal thoughts as well as the development of violent moods. Some, one of the most notable drugs that people use to, uh, as, as uh, hallucinogens is marijuana and mushrooms. Uh, another important type of illicit drugs that are also found within our communities are called depressants or sedatives. Depressants are basically substances that reduce arousal or stimulation. These drugs, when taken, they interfere with people's concentration as well as coordination. Uh, there are also several signs that a person could be suffering from illicit drugs. They include the following. One, impaired judgment and coordination, vomiting, shallow breathing, blackouts, or sometimes people suffer from memory loss. However, when we overdose or overuse depressants, we become conscious, some develop coma, and even others die as a result of the use of these drugs. Uh, the next important types of illicit drugs that are also found in our communities is called inhalants. Inhalants are basically drugs or chemicals that we inhale through our mouth or nose in order to feel high. They basically uh, include uh, items or drugs or chemicals that are generally found in our households, such as spray paints, markers, and even detergents. These are basically found in our homes, but sometimes people use them to make them high. Uh, these drugs, if there is no immediate medical intervention, and especially in cases where they have been overused, they can lead to heart failure as well as death. Uh, of course, understanding illicit drugs is not what is important for our case. What is important for our case is what makes the availability of illicit drugs as crime. In other words, what are the implications of availability of illicit drugs on criminal conduct or criminal behavior? One of the things that I wish to bring to your attention is that some of these drugs, such as sedatives, have been used by criminals to rob and harm their victims. As of course you know, sedatives are those drugs that demobilize individuals. So once people have been given these drugs, some they get demobilized, they develop coma, they become unconscious, and therefore they become easy prey for criminals. The other thing that we also need to understand is that some of the illicit drugs, they lead to perpetration of physical and emotional violence. Sometimes when taken, these drugs make us or we become hyperactive and in the process we become violent both physically and emotionally to those who are around us. But the other aspect that is important for us to observe here is that some of the illicit drugs, they are so lucrative, they are so expensive even in the street market to the point that those who deal in them do all they can for them to ensure that they continue with the trade. And as part of sometimes what they do is they form gangs which they use to help them in protecting them against arrests and against uh, the eradication of these drugs by the law enforcement agencies. But even more important thing is that these illicit drugs, they also lead to murder or sometimes cases of suicide. Some people take these drugs and in the process they end up committing suicide. Or sometimes people uh, who feel aggrieved or who feel emotionally disturbed, they buy these illicit drugs and they take overdose. And therefore, they use these drugs 
to commit their suicide missions. Others can use these drugs as poison if they are particular individuals that they wish to harm and the process some people end up uh, dying. Uh, but one other important thing that also make illicit drugs uh, have implications on crime is that some of the targets or the victims of these drugs are minors. That is, their school children, both in primary and secondary schools, that uh, the dealers target to sell these drugs to, and the process becomes a problem. But even more important is that once people get addicted or hooked to these drugs, they find all means possible to ensure that they continue the supply of these drugs. And in the process, some end up stealing money from households, robbing people in order to get cash to sustain the supply of these drugs. And of course, that in itself will lead to a criminal conduct. The other thing is that some of the dealers of these illicit drugs, they also own firearms and other dangerous weapons illegally. And they do this because they wish to protect the kind of businesses they are engaging in. Of course, uh, the fact that illicit drugs exist in society has made it possible for society and all its agencies to think critically on how well to manage illicit drugs. And the management of illicit drugs comes in many forms. One of them is prevention. Efforts are normally made to ensure that people are prevented from accessing these drugs. People are not easily lowered, and therefore there are certain strategies that have been used to help individuals get uh, uh, shielded from accessing these drugs. One of them is increasing knowledge and altering the attitude about issues related to the use of illicit drugs. Indeed, you need to notice that some of the people who get hooked to these drugs, it, they do so because of peer influence. Some suffer from low self-esteem, and therefore in the process it is easily uh, for them to yield into the demands of their friends. And therefore, by uh, 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 raising their self-esteem, by educating them, by making them understand that these drugs are not good, they are likely to change and therefore avoid taking these drugs. The other thing is that uh, another approach that has been used is equipping the victims or people who are likely to be victims of illicit drugs with the critical personal and social skills. And in that case, efforts are being made to ensure that we promote good health and well-being practices in these people. Of course, sometimes what makes people engage in these drugs is idleness. So what happens then, then we come up society or in some cases, uh, 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 people come up with alternative avenues where the youth or potential victims can get engaged and therefore idleness that would uh, lead to the use of these drugs is eradicated. Then the other one is addressing the developmental needs of the victims through livelihood support and related intervention. Sometimes people end up engaging in the use of illicit drugs because they feel frustrated they don't have jobs, they feel poor, and they feel stressed. So they take these drugs out of frustration. So sometimes the best approach to do is to support them economically and to help them uh, have a meaningful or a more sustainable source of livelihood so that that frustration that is associated with the loss of livelihood or lack of livelihood that leads them to drug uh, consumption is prevented. And of course, the last one is it's also important that uh, part of the preventive measure is to identify to identify people with the drug use problems and then refer them to appropriate treatment options. These options could be medical facilities or rehabilitation facilities. But of course, there are cases in which individuals are already hooked to the drug. In that case, therefore, these people have to be subjected to treatment. One of the things that have been done around treatment of uh, 
victims of, of um, illicit drugs or people who are hooked to illicit drugs is to give them appropriate medicine that reduces cravings for drugs such as heroin. Of course, it should be noted that even though some individuals might wish to avoid taking these drugs, some of them already hooked to them, therefore they crave for them. So it is felt that if you reduce the craving, then you are reducing the pattern of consumption and the process it is possible that these people can stop the habit of taking this drug. The other one is uh, rehabilitation or in what we call provision of long-term residential treatment programs. Uh, this one can be done depending on the level of abuse or the level of addiction an individual has reached. They can be taken to residential places where they can be rehabilitated so that eventually they become free or significantly reduced in terms of their addiction to drug. The last one with regard to treatment is sometimes uh, peer groups. Peer groups, peer educators can be brought on board. And sometimes bringing in individuals who have successfully been rehabilitated and are now leading a, leading a normal life can also, can also be brought on board to help in advising and encouraging those who are addicted so that they can be helped out of this particular uh, habit. Then of course there is also the aspect of the law enforcement, right? If you look at the first two approaches, those two first two approaches have uh, focused more on the victims or the, or the drug habit, uh, uh, victims or potential victims of uh, drug users. But the entire business of uh, illicit drugs also has the suppliers, the dealers. What then can be done also to, do, to, the, to, to, to ensure that we cut the supply? One of them is we need to confront, arrest, and prosecute individuals that are engaged in the illicit drug dealing. Otherwise, other efforts may not succeed as long as the supply chain still remains intact. The other case is where we can refer to drug offenders or drug abusers for treatment and rehabilitation so that we prevent reoccurrence or what we call recidivism. For instance, there are cases where drug dealers are arrested, prosecuted, and jailed. Once they have served their term, when they go back to the community, they again reignite their drug dealing networks and they go back to the same same business. So in that case, uh, prosecution alone or conviction alone might not help in eliminating or in minimizing the availability of drug addiction in society. So sometimes the best is these people, they also need to be treated, they also need to be, to be rehabilitated so that they also see to it that it's not good for them to continue engaging in a, a business that apparently endangers the lives and the future of other people. Then the other thing is that, that the law, law enforcement agencies have done is also to help in reducing the availability of drugs in the community, in our learning institutions, in prisons, and even in entertainment joints. Of course, these are the places where drugs are valuable. They are valuable in the neighborhood, they are valuable in schools where we are, and unfortunately, they are also valuable in prisons where convicts are meant to, 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 to serve their sentences and get rehabilitated. Of course, some joints, other than having the permitted drugs, such as permitted alcohol or licensed alcohol, some also double as joints where the trade or consumption of illicit drugs takes place. So it is important that the law enforcement agencies also intervenes and try as much as possible to ensure that uh, all the places where illicit drugs could be available, that availability is severely uh, uh, reduced, if not completely eradicated. Of course, the last one 
is the use of community policing. That is the cooperation between the police and the private citizens. And how can this help us achieve this? One of the ways through which we can achieve this is to help, with the help of members of the community, identify neighborhoods where these crimes exist so that efforts can be made on how well to tackle the crime. One way of eradicating crime is to understand where they exist. But of course, the other thing is through the partnership between the community and the law enforcement agency, it is possible for them also to take their time to research, to investigate and to understand the conditions of the drivers of the problem of illicit drugs. What are the conditions that give rise to this? Because you cannot solve a problem fairly and with a finality without understanding its causes. So the causes of these problems can be well thought out if the police and members of the community work together. The other one is to develop and implement long-term solutions tailored to the problem. Of course, this one will mean that what that the problems or the underlying causes of drug abuse or consumption of illicit drugs have been established, and therefore strategies are made to help in containing the problem. And these ones we are talking about long term. So up to there, that is what we have for today. It is your time to go through it, understand it, and of course, I would welcome any question or any issue that requires further clarification. Thank you for listening.